Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss Bourbon and Blades, a festival that happened in Kentucky earlier this month. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guest. <laughs> it's an everyone. Too. Demetrius Kane and Darren McRoy. Hey, <laughs> gang, what's up? Hey, honey. I, yeah. I was gonna say I call dibs on Kathy because that's the only one I can do an imitation of. So oh, you can you can do a Kathy imitation. Let's hear it. One good thing is I know Kathy can never take my job. Yeah, yeah this is true. This is true. So I yeah. heard it. She can't do it. No, she can't. No. So bourbon and blades. So this is an event that happened in Kentucky. By the time you hear this, it happened. It may be before it happened as we record. This sounds interesting to me. Sounds fun. Uh, it's a combination of people who love knives and people who love bourbon. I love both of those. So uh, I'd be in for that. But uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but we'll talk about uh, what what we think about that idea. And uh, and we were supposed to have two people who are really into uh, knives. Uh, uh, Lenny, who makes makes his own knives famously after watching Forge and Fire with his son. And uh, Demetrius is just, uh, Demetrius never watched Forge and Fire, but uh, he just, uh, he's made knives before. I don't know if he's still actively doing that or not, but it's something that he's done. So cool stuff. We'll talk about that though, after the break. For right now, Miss Becca Sue, so there's something you want to talk about. What is that? So Royce um, drove his convertible. Um, I think about a total of like four hours today. He went up to a family reunion that I possibly skipped out on. Okay. Um, and he drove up there. It's, it's a convertible. It was a nice day out. He drove with the with the top down, obviously. Yes. Um, when he got back, I looked at him and I went, oh, no. It's this nice, beautiful, sunny day out. When you ride a convertible, you always put your hat back. Yeah. Because you don't want your hat to blow off. Right. Royce has got this just fantastic sunburn across his face where he had his sunglasses on uh -huh. his nose he's got a forehead burn a clean an unsunburned stripe and at the very top another nice red stripe so he looks very very sunburned and it's kind of hilarious but i just want to know if you guys have ever got some really embarrassing or horrible sunburns before embarrassing or horrible sunburns okay okay um I haven't. I mean, I don't tend to uh, overindulge in the sun being uh, fair complected. I, I'm trying to avoid the skin cancer. So um, I, but, uh, and uh, of course, being as a man who's balding, uh, hats and all that is very important. If I'd be in that convertible, that would be very important. The proper coverage uh, would be, would be necessary, but uh, I could potentially get something like that. I just haven't, I used to have a convertible, but I haven't had one since. I don't know, 97 or something like that. So a long time, long time. But uh, no, I, I haven't had any unusual sunburns other than, you know, just too long at the beach and a little You'll painful. be in Kentucky this week, so maybe Royce will take you out to get you sunburned. That's true. <laughs> That's true. 
Very much. I've had several embarrassing sunburns. I it happens all the time. But I've gotten a lot better with it. Burn like a, a cake that's been left in the oven for too long. Right. Um, <laughs> but some of the highlights, because I always <laughs> some my, highlights. I always wear my hat backwards, and so when I was working at the zoo, like I just wore my hat backwards, and every time I would take off my hat, and I had exactly what. Becca was talking about with it. I just burned at my forehead and everything else on my face. And so it would take about a month after summer camp to, to, for it to go away because it was all <laughs> summer long. And so that was always oh. fun. And then another hmm. time I was on a float trip on a river may or may not have taken an accidental nap on the boat. <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> the accidental nap. Yeah, and an I had crackers on my chest. Out. And so there was outlines of saltine crackers. <laughs> This is better than I thought it could have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay. I was just as happy as could be floating yeah. down the river, uh, saltines on his chest. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that I'm was, sure there's no drinking involved with that either. Was there Darren? Oh, none. None. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. All right. Demetrius, how about you? Any uh, embarrassing sunburns? Apart from being burned and tan like a farmer, I am like white. Like there is not a, there's walls that are darker than me that are white painted. Uh -huh. <laughs> my kids just recently started going to the pool. They, yeah. they took them to swim lessons. We had to like go swimming, and my wife's like, "You can't wear a shirt at the pool." She's like, "It's weird." So I pulled my took my shirt off. She immediately was like, "You can put that back on. You look stupid." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, D Demetrius, uh, when you go to the pool or the lake or anything like any sort of water sport, what kind of shoes do you wear? Well, it depends. If it has a dirt, uh, I'm wearing I'm wearing boots, you know, muck boots. Uh, like if you're going to the that, lake, yeah. if there's no. sand, like if there's sand and it's a beach, a pool, what are you wearing what, on your shoes? What are you feet? wearing? Yeah. Oh, um, theoretically, so I have these cool like deck shoes that are kind of yeah. like short galoshes. Mm -hmm. We wear them at the distillery. Uh, I was told I can't wear those at the pool after multiple times because I just don't like touching the, the bottom of it. Right. Uh, and uh, so my wife was like, you look stupid. So I uh, stopped wearing those. But so now recently I've started going with uh, what are those? Uh, they're real stupid shoes, but got hey dudes, Crocs, Crocs, hey dude. Crocs. Yeah. I recently yeah, Crocs are Crocs. Crocs. Yeah, Crocs. Sweet. Uh, Crocs will give you another weird sunburn. That's oh, for yeah. sure. I got, oh yeah, I got. I burned my feet multiple times this summer wearing Crocs. Uh, yeah. But. Uh, I've never even tried Crocs on, but uh, people say they're comfortable. I've never uh, had them on. They're, they're just so ugly. They're just so ugly. I'm like, I, I can't, I can't wear these. And if I fly my foot, I'm like, oh, this is so comfortable. I can't. I wouldn't buy them anyway. So mm -hmm. it's like, uh, you just, you know. no, you just look stupid. You just have to admit that you look stupid. Uh, just, just accept it. I'm, yes, I'm okay with it. I just I'm like, I look stupid. Yeah, um, right. It's a daily occurrence for me. So what's the yeah, difference? No, uh, well, so we, yeah. so yeah, Crocs. Those are my Crocs new. now. Okay. Rocks. I can actually accept that. My my husband has a problem with like we we're going to like the water and he's like, "Well, I'm just going to wear my cowboy boots." And I'm like, uh, "No. You're not, <laughs> you're not doing you that." Yeah, it's let him. And like the That's other good. like we went on the boat the other day and he had on like socks and and sneakers. And yeah. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I'm like, "You look and like we we're going on the boat again the next day." And I said, "You're absolutely not wearing those again cuz you looked fucking weird." Every he's like, well, those other shoes are stupid, and I'm like, really? The shoes that every other person on the boat had on? Hey dudes, <laughs> yeah, like hey dudes, and like whatever. That's what else everybody say, wears. Hey now. dudes, yeah. or he goes, yeah. well, they have a stupid name, hey dude, and I'm like, that's what everyone is wearing on the boat. Yeah, like it's hey dudes, flip flops, like whatever the fuck, whatever. I'm like, it's not stupid. There's nothing stupid about it. Just wear something that makes you you look silly when you wear cowboy boots or socks when it's 90 degrees i would never wear hey dudes those are dumb looking <laughs> this is an approved message from demetrius kane don't wear yeah. hey dudes. i don't wear those either those are I, stupid. I think I they look ridiculous but wear crocs when you're on a boat and you're literally I, stepping and you're only on a boat and these are all these aren't like yachts these are like boats that you feel like step onto the cushions and stuff like that right. like you can't we, wear I, I gotta lines. stand up for my uh, my, my, my boy Royce here. I wear you wear fucking cowboy my boots? shoes, not cowboy. Are you boots, gonna wear no. cowboy boots on the boat? I don't have any cowboy boots. 
So I don't. Well, so, wear but you know, like you can wear shoes onto like the super, boat, but you you can't wear cowboy boots. boots are so easy to put on. Like I wear cowboy boots. Same with hey I dudes want... and Crocs. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true. But they don't look dumb. Yeah. yeah. Cowboy I, boots. The only time the cowboy boots boots look stupid is if you tuck your pants into them. If you do that, you're an idiot. Yeah. What about with shorts? With shorts, then you're probably going to get dirty. So it's like it's probably a good thing you're wearing, you know, wearing boots to keep some of the mud out. But I don't know. Like not going on a that. lake adventure with your friends, though. That, that, that yeah, lake adventure, it. I think that kind of pushes it. I've never yeah. worn them. Like now, the socks I wear are the ones that just are like the, you just go to the shoe. Yeah, yeah you were, very so you're wearing short. I'm wearing like you wear tall not, socks. I'm not wearing like athletic. <laughs> oh, he's, he's wearing tall socks. Well, try to defend. I your tried, man. Royce. Try I tried. I can defend Royce by being stupider. Um, okay. I, I had a toe sh- shoe phase, so I wore those shoes that have oh, the toes. God. I hate out. those. Oh, my I, God. Hang up on him, Steve. I know. <laughs> hang him up on the call. Hang up on him. We need to just dump him. <laughs> uh, I did that, and every time my toes would hurt. Like, why do my toes hurt? And then I realized my toes weren't meant God, to go in the toe shoes. Like, uh, my genetics, they're not meant to fit in there like that. And so, No one's toes are supposed to go in toe shoes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, You're either supposed to have though. no shoes? Or wide shoes. Technically, you shouldn't have anything that has like a, a skinny foot on it. You should have anything like your shoes should always have a wide like yeah. spot. Now, I'm a woman, so we wear stupid shoes that constrict our feet. But ideally, the best shoes to wear are going to have be wide, so your foot They're can like fully wide. hit the ground. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that you shouldn't have your to- your toes separated, Darren. No, no, it's weird. It was yes. uncomfortable. Why did you do that? <laughs> My, so my track coach. Who thought it was cool? Well, like who? who you, that's who. Like, well, like that your track really coach. Problem. That's who yeah. you're like. This yeah. dude is saying. who I'm gonna try and be like. Right. There I was, was young and dumb better than I am the now. Only sport that they call it a team sport, <laughs> and yet you're running like you're making it. You're just running. It's, yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad you're not doing that anymore. Yeah. Oh, uh, toe shoes. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, that's a weird one. All right, on toad shoes. Uh, we on that talking note, about sunburns, but yeah, <laughs> we yeah, switched to weird somewhere. fucking shoes. Oh, Becca, did you you ever have a weird sunburn? Um, yes, I've had a lot because if you can tell by the sun, that Fair literally, skin. I, I yeah. could I, if there was an ant nearby, I could burn. I, the ant would light on fire from like my skin just reflecting mm-hmm. from the sun. Um, so I, uh, you know, I think about the sun, I get sunburned. Um, so I've had a lot of very horrible burns. The worst one that I've had, they've, they've, they're always bad. Like they, they're never good sunburn. They're, right, that's like, a good, this like a good sunburn. It just yeah, gently um, warms me. But the very worst one I ever had was I'd been in the water all day long. I probably was like, I don't know, 14, 15 years old, which is also the worst time to be burned. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd been in the water all day long. And so I had water blisters uh. on my entire back. And so when I went to sleep that night, they all popped. And they all, oh. and my, my shirt that I was wearing to sleep was stuck to my back. And so mm. then I, I had to pull it off and like rip open all these blisters, like water blisters on my back. Yeah. And it made for quite the, uh, the quite the peel, I would mm. say. I looked like a fucking molting <sighs> lizard, you know, for a while. And it was just like chunks peeling off uh. my back. And that's probably the sunburn that will give me cancer. Oh, God. <laughs> oh god on that note it's time to drink <laughs> <laughs> anyways what is, what is everyone drinking let's get the back out of this baby one of her last cork pops so Could let's be get my her. last yeah. uh wow i went with all pretty high proof stuff today i did not realize that um i guess my lowest proof uh, that's what i like to do lowest proof first is 109 um we've got some mb rolling uncut unfiltered uh their kentucky straight bourbon whiskey okay in the small three seven or three seven five bottles. Okay. All right. Okay, that's really good. Really good. I'm gonna I'm gonna come at you with a three seven five bottle, the Jefferson's Ocean three seven five. So also a lower proof, ninety proof. So, all right, let's see what we got. I've had good luck with this bottle. Uh, it's always had good cork pops. We'll see. Let's see. I'm hopeful I can take this lead over. Here we go. Nah, it's terrible now. I said That's that. I slosh. set it up, and it was, it was, it was, it was absolutely horrible, and nothing but slush. Is there any alcohol in, left in your bottle? It sounded like you splashed it all uh, over the place. It's, but it uh, came out. Half full, half full. So, all right, Darren. I've got Darren. some Westland American Single Malt Whiskey, the uh, the STL barrel. Okay. It's a screw top. <laughs> it's a screw top. Did you know that the whole time? 
I, I no. should have because I had this problem last night when I tried to open it. <laughs> <laughs> or two nights. He ago. didn't know. You could see by the high. He tried to pull, it, and then he was like, "Oh." Yeah. <laughs> and then I changed yeah. all the mic settings and everything. Uh, uh, okay. Well, that yeah, was it. We, yeah. All right. Becca has the lead, but Demetrius is there. We'll see what he's uh, got. Demetrius has never won a single cork pot. No. Okay. Does that help? We don't know. It up. Nope. Doesn't help. <laughs> nothing nothing okay. there. Shaking doesn't help for anybody oh. in the future. No, no. Yeah, he tried. He tried. I didn't realize how easy it was going to be to win tonight, Steve. Cheers. Cheers. All right, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about Bourbon and Blades, this festival in Kentucky. We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. We're also sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop focuses exclusively on barrel picks. It's the job of owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott to seek out distilleries that are making the best whiskey in the world, taste through their barrels, and select the ones that are off-profile in the best way possible. They have high standards and refuse to allow anything into their store other than something they would be proud to have their name on. This leads to some really awkward conversations with distilleries that can't make it, but they do it for you, their customers. Learn more about what is going on at their St. Louis-based store by heading over to abvbarrelshop.com. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller in one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Uh, this is Tim Swyatt. I am a one-time cork pop champion. Even you can do it on the Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about the Bourbon and Blades Festival. Yes, we are. So at this festival, the following was happening. They had, uh, again, this is like a one-day festival type of thing. Four country acts were there. Uh, I'm not, not necessarily in favor of that. Uh, third generation knife maker, CJ Buck of Buck Knives is selling knives and then he's autographing them uh, again with an engraver. And uh, this was in Radcliffe, Kentucky. Does a festival like this have any interest to you guys? Knives and bourbon. First of all, it has a great name. I know yes, it's just the two things that are there, but um, right. fantastic name, Bourbon and Blades. Yes. Um, I think it's a, it sounds cool. If there's one person I know that would love to go to it, uh, it's my father-in-law. He would love that. Um, yeah. Set, he'd probably He's love gonna, to set up at it, honestly. Right, right. Um, He's got a lot of knives, but yeah. Yeah. And then my husband would probably enjoy it as well. Um, I would think so, yeah. I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. I personally, the bourbon part, obviously, yes. The blades right. couldn't really care less. You carry a blade, though. So, you know, I do, but I mean, game. Like, get a buck knife. You get a buck. You don't I have, have a buck, buck knife. knife. Well, there. Now you get get a sign. I keep knife. it next to my bed to yeah. fucking stab people if they cut, try and murder me. Maybe in get my a new sleep. buck knife. Oh, Maybe it's time to upgrade. Stabby stab. Knife. Yeah. How big a knife is it, Becca? Eight inch. Eight like inch the eight inch knife. blade. <laughs> eight inch blade. It's longer than that. That's your. That's your. Oh, you gotta have something better than that next to your like. <laughs> 
In and Aiden, I, I think it's I think it's like this. Yeah, that's like the handle included. No, this isn't hand included. This is just bl- this is just blade and then handles. I can go grab it. Yeah, we gotta come out of Kentucky and get you. She's a woman. She's for her whole life. She's heard this is. A I'm like, inches. isn't that? No. <laughs> I I know <laughs> what eight inches is. <laughs> the three of you have no fucking idea what eight inches is. Let's be fair. Yeah, Demetrius is like, yeah, eight inches is this. <laughs> this is eight inches. I'm very positive. I'm like, no, no it's so not. Funny. I'm like, eight, eight inches is literally yeah. this, like the size of my face. Eight inches. Eight, eight inches is actually very large. I know it's a surprise to you guys, but eight inches is actually a pretty big knife. We also have one of uh, I've got one of Lenny Eckstein's knives around here somewhere. Uh, you, you have this one is, from This Lenny? is not the size of the blade. It's a lot bigger yeah. than this. I can okay, tell you this is not an eight-inch blade. No, <laughs> that's uh, Royce told you that was eight inches. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Here it is. That's eight inches. I hope you like my eight inches. You're fucking what? <laughs> eight centimeters? <laughs> <laughs> not only did he get sunburned today, but he just got hauled out. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. So, uh, so that's a odd, yeah. That you're you are still looking at hand to hand combat, uh, eight inches as, as if that's your only protection around around the bed. There, uh, it's better than nothing. I'll I mean, I'm that. not going to put a fucking machete next to the bed. You have a, a machete? Why not? Good. Yeah, you know, a, machete? a machete. A machete. I feel like this is a big. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go grab my fucking knife because you guys are you oh, men awesome. have no clue how big this blade is. <laughs> Uh, uh, interesting, interesting. Okay, there you go. Uh, there you Not go. Not mine for comparison. Just yeah. Okay. So yes, yeah, that, that's a knife. Now that's a knife. Yeah. So okay. Interesting to see what she comes up with here. She's got to go all the way to her bedroom, so she's got to go to a different floor. So yeah, uh, she's heading heading up to the f- different floor and getting that. So we'll see what she comes back with. Um, I don't know, Do you, uh, Darren. Are you into knives at all? Yes, I would be very into this festival, and I think it'd be very fun to go there. I would really just like to go watch the guy sign knives. I know. <laughs> I feel like I that's know. a great way to mess up. Like, if you mess up, how do you fix that? You don't. You don't. You get one shot at it. Yeah, an engraver. Yeah. Well, if you, you own the company, I guess you offer to buy another one. I guess you're yeah. like, oh, we'll, we'll give you a credit, a store credit. I fucked this one up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is my blade. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Maybe it's only six inches. Let's see. Uh-huh. Oh. oh, guess what, guys? It's only six inches. <laughs> you didn't know what eight inches was. I thought yeah, she was doesn't know what eight inches is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a buck knife. It is a buck knife. Uh, okay. But you think that this is not long enough for fucking me stabbing someone that tries to murder me in my bed? Well, I it, it, like they have baseball. Bats. I mean, ideally, I would have a gun, which yeah, is also uh, next yeah. to the bed, but I also okay. have a okay. knife. <laughs> okay. Oh, so well, you got the gun. Or... You're good. I would grab the gun first. And then, yeah, I would uh, go for that one too. I just yeah, you know. keep keep the knife, knife as a backup. backup. Yes. Yeah, knife's backup. Okay. Christ. Okay. I was gonna say, I don't know yeah. Why the knife would be the first thing I grab? I, just, I was had problems with that the whole time. Eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is eight inches. Six. So, and this is what you guys I know that you guys think this is eight. That's just three. Three inches. Math Demetri- lessons with Becca. Demetrius, you pulled out a knife too. Is this one that you made? Oh yes. Uh-huh. Uh, yep. You can tell by the right, like, right. leather wrapped. Well, I just yeah, like the audience doesn't get this. This is like that. what I made when I was like twelve years old. Uh, okay. Which is why the hideous scabbard. You know, okay. all the people thinks that's cool, right? Uh, but I still carry it today. So, okay. um, but uh, I, I don't make as so I do more like uh, pots and pans now. I guess I've been like domesticated. <laughs> really? I was gonna say I'm like so you <laughs> sit around making make pots and pans. pans. No, so I make like uh, like carbon steel frying pans and stuff like that. Um, you know, so I hammer them out. And, um, sounds cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does sound cool. Really well, uh, they yeah. last. You know, pretty much you make one and they last a lifetime. So I, I make them for people and family members. I, I just recently did a, a Dutch oven for my wife. <laughs> oh, cool. I thought you were just farting underneath the sheets. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
walk into the I, I was going to say, I, I Dutch oh. live with my wife the other day. So, yeah. I, <laughs> so, yeah, walked into that one. So, so from, okay. from one and a half inches, the Dutch oven. So, okay. Know. That's cool. Um, you know, but, I watched I, I watched so much of that forged in fire. At one point, I thought I could make knives, and then I was uh, I, 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 I literally, and I've never made anything in my life. But I thought I watched enough of that show. I felt like I had the skill, but uh, then I never acted on it. And then Royce and I talked for a while. He'd get a forge, and I thought, well, this will be it. I I'd have a good outlet. I can go give it a try, and it'll be at Royce's place, and all the all the stuff it is. But he never did anything with it either. So we we're both going to do this. But these yeah. fucking shows make everyone think that they can do anything. <laughs> Yeah, between survivor people, like, I could definitely, I'd be fine with that. Uh, t- you know, naked and afraid, I-, I could definitely survive twenty-one days naked and afraid with a stranger. <laughs> um, forged in fire, like all this shit. Everyone's like, I could definitely the Olympics. <laughs> sure, sure. I could run faster than that motherfucker. I, I-, I can swim. <laughs> right. Like, no, you can't. You can't do it. Sorry, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Just accept the fact that you can't do most things in life. That should be the disclaimer they put on there. As you're watching this, you're going to think you, you can do this. Do you this. can't. You can't do it. You can't. Don't even try. Yeah. No. No. I don't know. If we you want we you got a forge show. because of Forge and Fire at, in college because one of my roommates. And how'd that was go for you? Yeah. And, and so we actually had back. a forge, and it we we got it working for a little bit, and then it turned into a bad idea because like it was a house that we were renting and we like what a, scorched what a fucking the walls surprise. <laughs> what a it huge fucking surprise that is. yeah, yeah. Hey, you did this inside you had a forge in a house <laughs> it was not in the house it was just outside of the garage and someone closed the garage door and it was too close so it wasn't the it was a garage door that was a little oh. bit melted but <laughs> so what the people say that yeah. They just kept it up when they did the inspection. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah the, we painted over it and they didn't call us out on it. So, yeah. We we didn't we didn't know better the first year. Of course, uh, our uh, our we had apartments at uh, where I went to, but it was like dorms or whatever. They're shitty, you know. And uh, of course, we had plenty of holes in the wall and shit like that. From well, we don't know. We just thought, hey, that's they're, they're used to this. It's college, right? They, I mean, yeah. Oh, they're like they come in and they're like what? And then they then they do a full complete inspection of the whole thing, take track of every fucking hole in the wall. And, uh, and and assess a bill that has to be paid right then, or you're not going to graduate. This is fucked up. So then I had to call my dad, and uh, he, had to, he had to release a check. <laughs> I didn't have the goddamn money. Neither did any of my fucking roommates, and they couldn't get a hold of their parents. I called my dad, who was a police officer. He had to be available. So I called him, and uh, yeah. Oh, he was pleased with that phone call. Uh, I'm sure he was. Yeah, just he just fixed the holes he, in the wall. He, he was happy to get it. Uh, yeah. We'll, uh, after that, the, then after that, because we had to pay for all these fucking holes and shit. After that, uh, yes, they, we never had that issue again. We fixed everything mm-hmm. ourselves. Do, do you want to know how I fixed some holes in my uh, in my yeah. apartment, Steve? Yeah, like like magazine so, pages and shit. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's how we did shit. I had. There. We just used paper. We, we just used I had, paper. Like yeah. they were like some like just reg- like cement brick walls. Uh-huh. Uh, and they had like some plaster over them, maybe just paint. I'm not really sure it was over them, but I had some stuff that was like stuck up there with like some just like 3M things to like hold things up. And when I'd taken them off, it ripped off the paint or the plaster that was on top of them. I don't know what was on top of them. So there was like big holes. And <laughs> I filled them in with toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> the I, was like, face. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. 20 maybe i have no idea what uh-huh. it was and i was like fuck because i was moving out but my roommate wasn't right. he's a shitty roommate and i was like fuck i was like i didn't make sure any i get my part of the deposit back right because actually i think i had it was my deposit and then he was taking over the lease so i got the whole deposit back as long as his room was clean and i was like fuck i was like i need to make sure these are fine and so i, I was like I, I didn't have any money or anything really to do and so i just i, I was like toothpaste fucking hardens up Right. And so I fucking filled him in with, to- with toothpaste and he tried to point it out to the fucking property manager. And they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. The wall looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> toothpaste. Yeah, toothpaste that's re- fucking worked. Recommend. There you go. Toothpaste fucking worked. There you go. Yeah. Little, little tips and tricks here. Yeah. There needs to be a disclaimer. It <laughs> does not work. <laughs> no, no, no. It does in a pinch because it hardened up. Because toothpaste will harden up it once it like, sits out. And uh-huh. so it, hard, it hardened up, and they they even touched the wall there, and they're like, "The wall's fine." 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's How a weird one. Huh? Mm-hmm. It wasn't that much. It was like I mean, it was. It, I don't think it's even half a tube of toothpaste, but it say it was just it was big enough. Small like, holes. Yeah. Say it was just it was ripped off the wall, and so I just like kind of patted it in there and gave a little bit of texture on it, and it stuck fine. It, fuck, it's probably still up there. Who knows? Oh right. yeah. Well, every time I mean, there were shitty apartments, so like, what are you gonna do? The heat turns on. They're like, why does it smell like mint? It smells like oh, peppermint yeah, in here. It smells like mint. It's minty fresh in this room. Like, no. That's the wall right here. It smells right. just like minty fresh. I don't know why. Hey, toothpaste sets up like plaster. It was good. It was yeah, good. Yeah, it worked. Okay. 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 You know, the walls are scratch and sniff. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Hopefully, it was, was it Colgate you used? That's the good stuff. I'd imagine, yeah. That's, you oh, know, yeah, got to keep those teeth looking yeah. nice. Yeah, Colgate. Colgate so whichever one, whichever one color matched, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, back to the night festival. What do you got? What do you want to I do? have a question. So do you think there's a lot of um, first aid injuries? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. This is like trying to show their Bourbon knife and blades. You're, 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 you're people open. drinking and messing with knives. Yes, it's uh, totally. Like, oh, I want to know what their liability insurance is like on this. It's thing. probably pretty much because uh, you know you're you're drinking and then you get two people, you, you get two people in a fight and and uh, oh, sure they're gonna get out their knives, of course. So yeah, <laughs> of course. Well, there's there's uh, yeah. Uh, I mean that's bound to happen. I mean so. Yeah. I, I wonder who like what distilleries were at this thing? Did it say? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know sure. that we got invited to that. Maybe they just did oh, like really? ones around there. I, I don't think so. And we and I don't have. even know where. What was amazed to me, I don't even know where Radcliffe, Kentucky is. I never I heard of it. I recognize them. Is that no Eastern idea. Kentucky? I don't know. Uh, but I, I just think it's a it's a coup to get the guy from uh, you know Buck Knives there. I, there that's a that's a big deal in the knife world. I and wonder if it was his idea though. I, it could be. It could he could be involved with it? Maybe he's a Kentucky oh. resident. I don't know. It's down between uh, Louisville and Elizabethtown. Okay. All right. So it's not so in the middle of A little of bit more southern-ish uh, between Louisville and Bowling Green kind of area. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It was, th- as we record this, I, if I remember correctly, it was this weekend. I was going to actually pack up and go if I could, but uh, I was at uh, I was in uh, Iowa this week. So uh, at uh, Cedar Ridge, we had an event at Cedar Ridge. Fantastic, by the way. If you get a chance, go to Cedar Ridge. Cool place for sure. Sure. All right. On that note, we're going to wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Darren, we're going to start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me filling in holes in my wall with toothpaste on and on Instagram at Deep Urban Adventures. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Becca. I'll tell you what. You're getting a fucking phone call if I go into the shop and there's some so <laughs> some things that I, I I recognize that are were, were holes in the wall that uh, have been filled in with toothpaste. And At least I fixed them. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's what Darren will be saying. They're fixed though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Demetrius, how about you? You can find me at Demetri Kane on Instagram and Facebook or at Nobletons on Instagram or Facebook. All right. Miss Becca Sue. You can find me on Twitter or on Instagram or on HGTV, giving you uh, tips and tricks on how to improve your home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at Miss Becca Sue, 1K, no C's. Uh, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that company website, abvnetwork.com. You want to check that one out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. we got our little club out there. Uh, that's the people we took out to Cedar Ridge this weekend. We do a lot of stuff like that, so check us out online, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us, ABV Barrel Shop, the tri- place where you can try before you buy. We are online, abvbarrelshop.com. Ms. Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing with you, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye, y'all. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some of the great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro is owned and operated by Russell Creed, who makes stills for the hobby distiller. He offers a one-stop shop for everything the at-home distiller needs. Whether it's a small, experimental stovetop still or something bigger you run outside, he has the still 
or parts you would have difficulty fabricating yourself if you were trying to build a DIY still project. Additionally, he has resources to assist in creating unique distilled spirits including heirloom grains, barrels for aging, and recipes. Check out Russell's company online at moonshinestillpro.com. Finally, I have a question for you. Have you ever boxed a bear? Of course not. That'd be silly. Bears really don't follow the rules, so shots in the back of the head, punches to the nuts, and scrums after the bell would be the norm. A better idea would be to enjoy Boxing Bear Whiskey, a brand crafted by Nobleton's Distilling House in Union, Missouri, and sold exclusively at the ABV Barrel Shop in suburban St. Louis. This is a popular offering that sells out quickly, but when you're in town, stop by the ABV Barrel Shop and see if they have it in stock. Better yet, sign up for their email and text distribution over at abvbarrelshop.com and you'll know exactly when it is in stock. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.